to introduce our three distinguished speakers to you today. Stephanie Tudor um, is a San Francisco-based editor who's written for publications including GoodMorningAmerica.com, Food Network Magazine, Cosmopolitan, Zagat, and Time Out New York, just to name a few. She is currently a senior editor at Eater SF and concentrates on Bay Area food news and dining guides. Before that, she was the associate food producer at GoodMorningAmerica.com and an editor at Zagat Survey right here at Google and a bunch of other really cool things that I'm sure she will let you know about. She has also um, graduated from the Culinary Arts Program at the International Culinary Center in New York City. So welcome, Stephanie. Ow. Right next to her, woo! We right next to her, you, you get that going. Right next to her is Jake Dell, who is the owner and vice president of Katz Delicatessen, an iconic Jewish deli established in 1888. He's grown up in the res restaurant industry and officially joined the business in late 2009 and is in currently in charge of all major operations. So right now he's working hard to modernize the 130-year-old deli system and processes while continuing to maintain the old world feel and taste for which Katz is famous. This is exciting. Most recently, Jake has expanded shipping to include national reach. Yes, that means us. You can get his stuff. It's good stuff. And he'll open a second location soon. His favorite meal, in case you're wondering, is pastrami on rye, which he prepares himself with a side of latkes and chocolate egg cream. I go back and forth between the egg cream and the black cherry soda. I don't know. OK. What's your condiment of choice? Mustard. Mustard. No other. OK. No. And next to him, Evan our very own San Francisco wise sons. So, you know, throwing elaborate dinner parties, it's not something most 12 year olds do, but for Evan, this was just normal. He started cooking younger than most, eschewing Kraft mac and cheese for Thai cuisine and baked Alaska. His love of cooking and food stuck with him through college, and after studying architecture and joining the corporate world, he eventually found his passion and it was behind the stove. So, he uh, realized his fondness of food had roots in Jewish soul cooking, and at Wise Sons, he recreates classic dishes with integrity using quality ingredients while still hitting the proper nostalgia that would make your bubby proud. I'm gonna hand it over to Stephanie. Thank you all for being here. Guys. Nice. So those are awesome PR written intros. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to tell you a little bit more about these two that wasn't in that, um, Jake was supposed to be a doctor, but Pastrami called. And in this, while he was applying to med school, instead he went to work at Katz's and just couldn't leave. You really disappointed your yeah. grandmother, didn't you? No, no, it's a different Jewish mother's dream. <laughs> just switch the, switch the dream. Fair. Um, and Evan has absolutely no culinary experience and actually started his career as an architect. And fun fact, this building used to be Gap, which is where Evan worked. And now we're, we're back where it all started. Um, and then Evan, a few years ago, decided that he liked food instead. He, do you guys know La Cocina? It's in the Mission. It's a nonprofit. Yes, lots of fans. Um, and so Evan volunteered there and rediscovered his love for food and decided he wanted to make it. And so we started fooling around with some recipes. And now they are operating in the Mission on 24th Street. They are in the Contemporary Jewish Museum. And they just opened a bagelry um, on Fillmore. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have kind of the old guard of Jewish cuisine and the new guard. Um, very purist, pastrami on rye with mustard, and then we've got some pastrami cheese fries um, to my far right, so. But their sandwich kind of inspired everything, so. That's the truth, it's like, yes. It's a nice. Oh, thank you, yeah, we try. Um, starting there, so, I mean, Katz's pastrami, for those of you who haven't been, next time you're in New York, go or ship it here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really iconic. And to walk into something like that, how do you tackle that and keep it running day to day what it is? Right, so we, um, we go through roughly 15,000 pounds of pastrami every week. Uh, and every pound we try and make sure is exactly the same. So whether it's the first time you came in or you know, if none of you have ever been, uh, that first experience is hopefully the same as 
anyone else's first experience, whether it was 60 years ago or, or a week ago. Um, so we cure it and smoke it all in the old-fashioned way. Uh, and it's, it's just about maintaining that food tradition and, and sticking to the classics and sticking to know, you know, we, we know what we do and hopefully we try and keep that going. Uh, we're, we're a little afraid of change in some ways. So. Yes, they, for those who haven't been, who has been in the room? Nice. A good number. So okay. all of you who've raised your hands, you know about the tickets. Wait, did blue, Blueberry's been? No. No. Okay, right. <laughs> for those of you who aren't here, there is a lovely Jewish doodle. Poodle? A Jewish doodle. <laughs> Cock a doodle. in the I love audience. That. That's a great. Doodle a doodle is in the audience. Yeah. Kosher. Um, kosher, kosher doodle. Um, so you guys know about the ticket system. I'm not kosher though, actually. So, no pastrami for judo. <laughs> Blueberry the judo. That's great. <laughs> um, if you've been to Katz's, the system is you walk in, you get a ticket. Why don't you tell us a little more about it? Yeah. So um, it is a very old system that leads to a fair number of problems sometimes. My dad um, calls it ticket drama. Ticket drama is a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it becomes a battle royale, uh, but ticket drama is a much nicer way to put that. Uh, so it's an old, you get your ticket, you go around from station to station, uh, you order your food, you sit down, you eat, you pay when you're done. Seems simple enough, but people tend to lose those tickets. Uh, and uh, it's just not something you see every day. But that's part of the charm, right? That's part of what makes Cats is unique is that you can go and experience these old ways of doing things uh, and, uh, you know, whether it's the food or whether it's the neon signs or whether it's people yelling at you or whether it's, you know, the ticket system, it's, it's uh, the classic way to do it. You went to um, Stern, NYU Business School. I did. I'm sure you learned some updated processes. So, um, yeah, uh, so I definitely, I, I went with the intention, I knew how we do business, uh, right? I grew up around that business my whole life. Birthday parties, I, I had my bar mitzvah in the store. Um, in fact, actually, if you look, there's a neon sign that says Jake's Bar Mitzvah on the side. It's my favorite neon sign. <laughs> um, so I grew up, I knew how we did business, but that doesn't mean that's how the rest of the world does business. Um, and so went back to kind of learn and see what else was out there and read case stories about why being in a family business is the worst idea in the world. <laughs> um, and all these horror stories and, and took what I could from that and tried to apply it to things you would never see, right? So the um, back of house, boring, you know, business of restaurant types things, which we both hate um, because it's the boring stuff. But, you know, you, you need to change those sometimes, every once in a while. Ordering, supply. Yeah, you know, we, we do in total um, 30,000 pounds of meat a week when you add in the corned beef and the hot dogs and salamis, uh, all those other good stuff. So, um, yeah. Things like that, the ordering process is important. Your your supply chains, if you will, all that all that fun stuff. So, if that's your least favorite part, I would imagine interfacing with people. Yeah, no, I among... hate people. I'm really shy. <laughs> you went into the right business. Yeah, uh, no, I love talking to people. That's that's what makes it special for me. Uh, is the fact that I can go around from table to table and talk to customers. Who so, do yeah. you see on a daily basis? Uh, everyone. I, I get regulars from uh, all over the world, but I, I have a couple favorite regulars always that come in and usually they're, they're old timey in their ways and like to yell at me, so that's always fun. Uh, <laughs> but I actually- Jews are particular. They know so, what they like. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure um, Blueberry the, the Judo would agree. Um, very particular dog there. Um, so, I actually, there's one woman that comes to mind who's, she's 94, 95, and every time she comes in, she tells me the same story, and like I know the story by heart because she's told me the story <laughs> 20 times at this point. But it, every time I can't help it because it's such a sweet story about how when she was a kid, she would come with her three sisters, and they would make, you know, they would spend, they would sp spend the whole week making these tchotchkes and they would sell it on Delancey Street and they would use the, whatever they made for the week to buy a sandwich and they would split it four ways and that was her weekly tradition. And so even though her three sisters have now passed away, she comes back and she just thinks of their memory. And, and she, 
inevitably cries and then I cry about it <laughs> because she's crying and then it's just like a whole thing. I mean, that's a lot to uphold. It really, Cats is, I mean, for you, it's your family business, but a lot of people consider it theirs, I would imagine. Uh, that's what I love. That is 100% my favorite part of the job uh, is that for everyone who raised their hand that they've been before, they also, you guys all have your own story. Um, and you all have your own history with the place. Um, and my story is just one of many. Um, I'm lucky enough that my story started in the womb. Um, and I, it's just, it's a web, right? Katz's creates this web where we're all connected with this food tradition that, that is in some ways largely disappearing, but thanks to Evan and, and other people out there, it's, it's coming back and there's this love and, and just great desire to get back to that food tradition. Mm -hmm. um, great intro to Evan, thank you. <laughs> I try. <laughs> so you guys are kind of the purists. You are what Jews have been eating for centuries. Evan, tell us a little about what Wise Sons does instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Where, whereas Katz's is the the institution, we are uh, we're the new kids on the block. Um, you know, we have we have to balance that <clears throat> the the nostalgia that you know people come in with, and they may have gone to their local deli, or a lot of our customers grew up in New York and went to Katz's, and they come and they they have expectations and a lot of those expectations you know it's not a, like it's part of it is eating that sandwich um, but a lot of it is also the story that goes along with it so you know a long time ago well, well we haven't been around that long but in, in our age a long time ago we we kind of said all right there are these people that they come in they're going to complain about the food it's not going to taste like the sandwich they had with uncle irving you know on sundays <laughs> but the fact that they are coming in and they're they're imagining they're you know they, they smell the corned beef and all of a sudden they get brought back to that time, that that's you know that that brings us satisfaction um, because you know we aren't the hundred year old business hundred and thirty year old business. Um, Can you tell people a little people a little bit about your menu to everyone? Sure. Um, so <laughs> we try. I mean, we are uh, a Jewish deli. Uh, we make everything from scratch. Um, basically, when we started, you know, I was in New York and I was eating a Katz's sandwich, and I said, "Well, shit, we don't, we don't have this in San Francisco." I went to school at Berkeley, um, came here, worked in corporate for a couple of years, hated myself, um, and <laughs> no <laughs> that, that was me personally. Um, you know, was, was really unhappy and started. My brother was getting an MBA at the time, and he was like, "Here's a business plan template. Like, keep yourself busy." So we had gone to, I'd been to New York, I had eaten a sandwich, we were trying to recreate it in our backyard. And uh, it kind of just started to gather steam. And so we based our, eventually we, we opened, we did a pop-up, we based our menu on kind of what we call the pillars of Jewish deli. The pastrami sandwich, the pickle, the matzo ball soup, um, chocolate babka. I For us, all those things. Terrible, terrible things, yeah, I don't need horrible. any of them. Um, so so that, that's kind of, you know, we said, okay, we're going to sit out to make great pastrami, uh, great rye bread, because we looked around and nobody was making it, so we had to do it ourselves. Um, keep in mind that making things from scratch was not, it was not our intention. Our intention was to serve the best that we could, but we couldn't find the products here. Um, so, so we started making the pastrami, the rye bread, uh, the matzo ball soup, the chocolate babka, um, and we started writing the restaurant menu and realizing that um, we wanted to put some personal touches on it, but at the same time, we wanted to serve the things that uh, were the classic Jewish deli dishes. So in New York, you know, there's a lot of the New Guard as well, but they're the new, you know, the, the Mile End, for instance, and they're able to do, they can put whatever they want on their menu, right? Because uh, if you want to go get a matzo brai or lox eggs and onions or these classic Jewish deli dishes, you go to however many different places in New York, but here in San Francisco, uh, there wasn't that. So we had we strike a balance. Are you throwing shade at Saul's and places like that? San Francisco. Ooh. Okay. Salt, Saul, Saul, great East people. Bay. They've been Where's nothing. No. They're gone. Yeah. Um, Joe was a great guy. I mean, we, we yeah. No, Did no, you put them out of business? No shade. No, he was trying to sell me the business for years. Um, no, no shade. Um, we couldn't find what we imagined, right? Our, my nostalgia, my partner Leo's nostalgia, the things that were visceral. Um, 
So, you know, we put our own touches. We have pastrami cheese fries on the menu. We have a burger that has like a beet horseradish spread and we grind pastrami into the burger patties. We, uh, instead of serving bacon, we serve pastrami that we treat like bacon. Um, but we also have all the classics as well. Um, I'm sure at Katz's you can't get a vegan Reuben. You know, I don't, or, I don't even know we, what that we, means. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, have a, you know, we, have a, we we do smoked mushrooms instead of pastrami. Um, so there are some touches that are our own, uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, what choices did you have to make to make Jewish Jelly relevant again in San Francisco? I mean, no one, I mean, well, not no one, but a lot of people in New York aren't begging for a vegan Reuben. But I would bet that there are people here who care. And so have you run into that a lot, the San Francisco customer? People are, yeah, people come in and they're stoked that they have options. And, you know, we don't have the necessarily the built-in population that's going to go to the deli and get a pastrami sandwich every day. When we open Wise Sons on 24th Street, I live two blocks away. That's a neighborhood restaurant. Like, it doesn't matter. And I think there's a certain point at Katz's, too. It's a blue-collar restaurant, right? People come in. Like, they're not just Jews. They're not just looking for deli. They might be looking for, for breakfast or a hot dog or, you know, whatever it is at any time of the day. And I think, you know, when we, when we opened, we were, and we still are, we want to be a neighborhood restaurant before we're just like this Jewish deli. So why not go the traditional route then, if you wanted those dishes? Um, well, I think, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a tough question. But I mean, I think it, to go the traditional route, um, it's hard to be a new business and do that. Um, we don't have the history, the roots uh, that a lot of these other old school places have. And again, we don't necessarily have the community here to support that. It's also important to us. Um, you know, we use high quality meats and produce, and you know, we're, we're in the Bay Area, and we want to be kind of a Jewish deli that serves the populace of the Bay Area. My intention was not to open a New York place in San Francisco, mm -hmm. right? It's true, though. The history is a huge part of it. I mean, Katz's has almost taken on a life of its own at this point. Um, I mean, not to discredit what you do, because it's so important to keep it super high level, but how much do you think is the history of it and how much do you think is what you guys are doing to move it forward? Um, I would say that's, that's the majority of it. I mean, the, the, the people don't want me to make a vegan Reuben. I mean, right. like that's not what I, is expected of me. And in, in many ways, that's actually very lucky that I, I don't have to have those same issues. Yeah. And that I can focus just on the core of what we do, uh, what we know how to do, and not change is is amazingly lucky in some ways. Yeah, it's it's got its own set of challenges, um, but in other ways, it's a lot easier. Um, stick to the classics and give the people what they want. Mm. Different populace than Different either way. Populace. Give them, give the people what they want. But either way, I mean, even your customer base is changing. I mean, the Lower East oh, Side absolutely. itself is. You know, my mom grew up Jewish on the, on the Lower East Side, and now you can't find many Jewish families on the Lower East Side. True. Uh, I mean, look, that's that's part of what makes New York so unique and so special in its own way is is that it's constantly changing. And you go and one day there's a, an Indian restaurant there, and the next day it's an art gallery, and the day after that it's like a clothing store, and you're like, what the hell? This was a week. <laughs> um, but. Um, it, but for us to be able to stay the constant while everything else is changing around is so important to me, um, to my family, and to my extended family, any of my, you know, my, my customers. And, and I do view it as one big family, right? It's, it's you know, the inner Jewish grandmother in me that wants to feed people. <laughs> and so I want to feed people what the classics are with you know a pastrami sandwich that's what i that's what i do so you guys have had to make a few changes to kind of protect that yeah of course i mean over time there's there are certain things you you do have to do we did add um a reuben onto the menu uh 40 years ago that was a big deal <laughs> congratulations yeah that was a pretty big change uh, i'm sure you remember that well <laughs> yeah yeah it was a big deal it was a big so this is the whole thing and then uh cheese steak like 10 years ago that was I know, I know. It was a big deal. Kosher? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. Not for um, blueberry. Sorry, blueberry. No food for you. Um, yeah, no, we, you know, little things here and there. Um, we, we 
upgraded our, our cheesecakes 15 years ago. I mean, so it's customers going, are still rocking. They can't get used to it. There's a couple that are like, oh, I remember when Drake's cakes were here. I'm like, okay, <laughs> of but Drake's cakes sucked. They were horrible. Yeah. No offense to Drake's cakes. Sorry. No. <laughs> no offense, but you suck. No, it was just that specific. Moving on. Um, <laughs> you guys have also you've made some more exciting changes lately, like an expansion. Yeah, that is definitely more exciting. So um, we are moving into a small space in Brooklyn, uh, just right over the bridge. Um, uh, right, uh, it's the decab market, which was an old, um, so I don't know if this crowd's familiar with it, there was the Albee Square Mall. Um, may, you maybe know that really horrible Biz Marquis song, Albee Square Mall, it was about it too. So, <laughs> but there's a lot of history in that space. I think you should space. sing it, I don't know if we I'm know it. <laughs> I don't know if I could do justice to his beautiful voice, um, but we'll leave, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. For anyone who doesn't know who Biz Marquis is, I highly recommend you look it up. <laughs> um, so, totally, what were we saying? Oh yeah, so. Um, expansion. Right, expansion. Uh, it's more, in some ways it's actually a traditional move for us. It does seem like new and changing and all that, but we're losing base with a lot of our, or losing touch with a lot of our existing customer base with uh, the crowd that would come in, drive in, park, grab a sandwich, jump on the Williamsburg Bridge and drive home that Brooklyn crowd, that Long Island crowd, that Queens crowd. Uh, and, and it's because it's getting harder and harder to park down there. That neighborhood is crazy. It's just chaos down there. Um, and so in some ways, this is a small takeout only, grab and go, park your car, get in, get a sandwich, and get going. Uh, and so in some ways, it's not new at all. It's reconnecting with the old. And in other ways, it certainly is new. Uh, it's a new space. It's a new operation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's Brooklyn. So yeah. When is it supposed to open? Fall. Right now is when it's looking like, um, but it's construction. So who the hell knows? Another big <laughs> headline lately was you sold your air rights. Yeah. Can you tell us what that means and what happened? Sure. Uh, I'll let you know once I know what that means. <laughs> uh, no. So uh, essentially. We made it so that no one can ever build on top of us. Um, so we, it gets a little misleading when you say sale of air rights. It's more like a transfer. We did um, make seventeen million dollars. So says the New York Times. <laughs> uh, so the, um, you know, it's the idea was to preserve the building um, and at the same time allow us to reconnect in Brooklyn. And at the same time, uh, expand our shipping operations um, and, and really grow it out so that hopefully we could ship to all you fine folk. Um, when did you start shipping? World War II. Uh, I, Literally. I, yeah. Our slogan is <laughs> send a salami to your boy in the army, uh, which rhymes if you say it properly. You guys can, I'll let you practice at home. Uh, <laughs> send a salami to your boy in the army. You got to say it the right way. Uh, but that was only salamis, and it was only to soldiers overseas. And then in the early 90s, we kind of expanded it a little bit to our regulars, mostly in Florida, who said, <laughs> we really want some All pastrami. All those snowbirds, they need their pastrami. Yeah, we really want that pastrami. So we, we started wrapping it up in the most inefficient way you can imagine. It was just like ice blocks, and just like wrapping it, and then throwing it in this big box, and hoping that it got there OK. Um, and then over time, we kind of. They all died. But <laughs> Next chapter. <laughs> Damn, that's really dark. <laughs> um, yeah, so and then we sort of expanded it and, and built it out a little bit. Uh, and now we're, we just started offering a two day shipping option uh, as of like two days ago, I think. Um, so, and then I'm hoping in a couple months I can really drop that shipping price and. and uh, do it at a reasonable price. Get you some pastrami over here. So if I ordered it, what would it look like? Not that you can't get pastrami over there. But, you know, it's okay. maybe you're not in downtown San Francisco and you can't go to him, so you need some pastrami from me. That's fine. Um, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. Like if I were to order it today, like in two salad? days, pastrami what am I going to get? Like? But is it, it's already on the rye bread? It's already no, so it's sliced meat, Okay. Uh, packaged, bread separate, pickles, knishes, all separate, mustard. Uh, and uh, just sort of heat it up a little bit, slap it all together, or eat it cold if you're feeling like an animal, but um, <laughs> I, would, I would recommend eating it up. <laughs> and then you make a nice, beautiful sandwich. Do you do delivery in New York? I do. 
I do, yeah. Um, I cater all over the, the city, do different events and parties and things like that. I, I think a bike delivery here would be a little, little difficult. I could work on Well, you that. guys deliver, you know, you know how it works here, caviar. Yeah. Well, it's no, no, I just met from New York. Oh. Really <laughs> yeah. That would take a little while. Yeah. Um, have you had a lot of success with delivery here? Absolutely. Yeah. How much of your business is it? Uh, about 10% of our business is uh, delivery uh, in San Francisco. A lot of people hung over on Saturdays and Sundays <laughs> want their brunch delivered to them. Yeah. Uh, I can't get out of bed. We've all just, been there. Just send me some <laughs> San Francisco is so big. You know, it's so hard to get around. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> Sometimes you can't get out of bed. You just can't. <laughs> hey, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you feel about someone like Evan coming in? And be honest. <laughs> wow, that was, you almost caught me on that one. Uh, I hate this guy. I hate everything he stands for. That's it. I'm out That's of here. That's why I chose, yeah, we put you two together. It. Get out of here. No, I, I, um, I love it. I, I actually think it's the best thing that can happen in Delhi. Um, and I, would, I, I think what he's doing is spectacular. Um, because when people start to forget about the f Delhi food tradition, it, it hurts the entire deli business. Um, it's, you know, what if you turned around tomorrow and there were no Chinese restaurants left? You know what I mean? And, and there's one Chinese restaurant like left. Like a Jewish person's nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no deli, no Chinese food? Oh my God. Yeah, what are we gonna do on Christmas? Uh, so, um, I, I think it's great. I think it brings it back to top of mind. I think it makes people want these foods and maybe, you know, when you come to New York, then you're like, okay, I, I had his his crazy vegan thingy. Uh, <laughs> I don't sell that much of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I want I want to see what the the original was, right? And and I'm happy to be the original, I'm, and that that's great. Like that's who I am. That's what I do, mm -hmm. and I, I I love it. I know not everyone feels that way, Evan. Oh, what about about, about you guys? <laughs> oh yeah, we we have a ton of we call them detractors. Uh, yeah, I mean we'll go take them out. Have right you guys now. seen Deli Man the movie? No. Okay, so it was a documentary about this guy in Houston, Ziggy, and he has a deli, Ziggy's, and it's very popular down there. And he's super traditional, very um, very much about not evolving the Jewish deli. And I know that Evan has a fun little interaction with him. He said, so this guy is like, if you haven't seen the movie, he's like exactly what you would expect a guy that runs a deli to look like. And he like Sound speaks like. in Yiddish and like, yeah. um, but you know, he's probably like 50, 45. Nothing wrong with that. You know, he, he acts a lot older <laughs> than he is. Um, he's like an eight year old man. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, we, we started the pop-up news spread that we were going to open a restaurant in San Francisco, and I get like a one-liner email from him. It's like, uh, it was like no subject. It's, hey guys, just so you know, I might open in San Francisco. Ziggy. <laughs> and I, like, I don't know whether it was like meant to scare us, or like that we're like, we shouldn't be like trying to do this new school thing. Um, but And in you, the movie, he explicitly talks about how he doesn't approve of what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's cool to each their own. Um, it's, uh, we're, we're kind of used to it at this point. Um, and I, mean, I don't know, I mean, we own it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not Katz's. I don't want to be Katz's. They're awesome. Their pastrami's a gold standard. But like, yeah. I, I don't want to make that. I don't want to recreate that exactly. Um, you know, uh, I don't. I don't want to have a ticket system. I don't want to be Russ and daughters. I mean, definitely don't want the ticket system. <laughs> uh, there's a lot that we can learn. There's a lot of things that they do really well. But you're an institution. I'm never. You know, maybe in 130 years, like, maybe, <laughs> you know, um, real estate doesn't work like that anymore. But, <laughs> um, but, but you know, like we have we have a long way to go, and like, there, there's no wrong way as far as I'm concerned to. To, to have a, a deli and to serve a pastrami sandwich. It's a place for people to come together and eat a certain type of food, but there's, I don't think the formula that worked 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 100 years ago is necessarily gonna work for a new restaurant now. Well, so I, I if I can may jump in real quick. Um, Please. 
with Ziggy. He, he and his father actually came uh -huh. on, and in the same film. He came and, and we showed him how we pickle it and we showed him the back room and all that. And we were teasing him. We were joking with him about him being the new kid on the block. My father was like <laughs> joking with him and giving him a hard time. So I'm a little surprised. I think, I think maybe he was just giving you a hard time because I, I, totally. think, he like, I think he does also agree that delis shouldn't, you know, the more the merrier. You know? Right, and you know, we're not opening next door to each other. He's in Houston. Yeah. I'm never going to Houston. Like not even to visit. <laughs> um, sorry if anybody's from Houston. Um, there's a fake cat is in Houston. Is really? Right? Yeah. He you guys have a lot of like knockoffs. He pretends he's related to us, but he's not. Hmm. I mean, the fact is, though, is that the Jewish jelly is dying, and there used to be thousands of them, and now there's maybe a hundred. I don't. Not well, there's even. like a crazy statistic in New York. I don't know. If yeah, you, David. Have you yeah, read his? Of course. Yeah. I mean, David is like. He, he loves to talk. If you haven't so, read yeah. Save the Deli, it came out probably just before we opened. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, this guy David Sachs writes about kind of the history of Deli and where it, where it where it's going or where it was going five years ago. Yeah. He's a character. I mean, he's really did his research too. Awesome. He really. His the first chapter is him cutting at, at Katz's, being a cutter and like his experience with that. Um, and How do he, you get that? How do you? How can you spotlight as a cutter at Katz's? He was horrible. He was so bad. <laughs> I love David, but he was the worst cutter I've ever seen in my Do life. I, speaking of that, can I ask, can I ask a question? Do you want to try cutting? Uh, yes. Tuesday, I'll be there. All right, sounds good. Um, I can do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do if you tip, do you get more meat? Is, is that a real thing? <laughs> That's the rumor. Uh, <laughs> my dad can confirm that. Okay, so <laughs> you guys Just know saying. if you haven't been to Katz's, it's like. Or like any time you read about it, it's like you got to tip the cutter because you get like the better quality or more meat on your sandwich. Well, you at least get to sample as you go. People put a lot of money in there. They do. They do. So I'll say this much. They're not supposed to necessarily do that. Right. That's why you keep the jars out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, each cutter is an artist. <laughs> it's like Subway. Like, like Subway. They call them sandwich artists at Subway. I'm just saying. Ah, oh, daggers. <laughs> daggers. Come on, I had to get one in. <laughs> um, that pastrami that they made. Have you tried that? No. Oh, I, I did. I had to try it. It was like, oh, man. No knock on, actually, no, knock on Subway. That, that was horrible. Um, <laughs> what? What, what were we saying? What was that's that? Well, I think that's one thing we can, we can agree on, right, is that uh, there's so many sandwich places now that are serving such like garbage such garbage yeah. and like meat that's Boar's got head. all this stuff pumped oh. into it and you know yeah it's pretty yeah i think it's something brutal. that that blueberry would hate yes. <laughs> i think we could agree on that the discerning dog yeah. over there um so what do you think you're gonna have to do to keep cats around for another 130 years uh well if i'm alive for the next 130 <laughs> years then uh, God bless medical technology, mm -hmm. first of all. You never um, know. And it's, then we'll actually have proof that pastrami keeps you alive for longer, so I'll be golden. Um, what do I need to do to keep it? I think just stick to the classics. Um, you know, what, and I've touched on this, and I, I might sound like a broken record, but I think part of it is, you know, it, it's the food, it's the classics, it's what we're known for, it's hopefully the, you, you said gold standard, and I appreciate that. That that's what I'm going for, right? It's to be the best pastrami sandwich you've ever had in your life, um, every time you come in. Um, and it's also the nostalgia aspect. It's that sight. Um, you know, you come in. It's the neon signs around. It's the ticket signs. It's the guys behind the counter. It's the smells um, of well, mostly garlic. But um, and then the you know just the noises and the, and then. You know, it, it, on top of nostalgia, there's just the atmosphere, and and I, I think when you take those, if you want to call it the Holy Trinity uh, or or some sort of other stupid, I don't know, if we could come up with some stupid <laughs> deli related name. Yeah, um, I think if as long as you stick to that, and we stick to who we are, uh, and and focus on making sure that customers are happy when they leave. Hopefully, we'll be around for 130 years, and I, I don't know what more I can do. <laughs> Which is funny because it's 
I mean, consistency is certainly what every restaurant needs to focus on, but you almost have the opposite task of innovating and... Yeah, I mean, it's important to keep things, uh, for us, it's important to keep things fresh and you know to continue to to make people excited to to come and eat eat what we're serving but at the end of the day 60% of what we serve is a pastrami sandwich and at the bagel shop everybody wants smoked salmon i mean it's like people still come in mostly for the classics it's maybe the locals the neighbors that want something different every time they come in but um, you know for like we have to build we want to build what you have right we, for instance, I got an email this morning from somebody who's bris, we catered their son's bris five weeks ago, and we got a thank you note from him today, this morning, with a picture of his son. It's like, you know, he's a, he's a bit fatter now, but we just wanted to say, like, thank you so much. I thought you got a note from the son. Now. From the son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and we, we can't wait for you to cater his bar mitzvah. Aww. Nice. And, and that's, 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 that, like, is, like, exactly what we're trying to cultivate. Uh, I, you know, I have memories as a child going to a specific deli, and that's forever going to be my first impression of Jewish deli food. And uh, we, we want to cultivate that with families in San Francisco and the Mission at our 24th Street restaurant. Uh, we've already seen, you know, kids that came in, in a, you know, in their parents' arms five years ago or are now coming in and, like, you know, they're five years old. Um, <laughs> surprise! <laughs> that happens. <laughs> um, but we're, we're basically starting, we're, we're starting fresh. Um, so we have to continue to really try to make, uh, cultivate that community feeling and spirit and create our own nostalgia um, while trying not to be stuck too much in the past. I think there's a balance. We also need to buy our real estate. <laughs> Welcome to San Francisco. Yeah. Um, cool, well, I'd love to open it up to questions if anyone yeah, in the audience Yeah, way more fun. Um, Evan, you might know this, uh, but just down the street, there's this place called Itza, mm -hmm. which is where you go order your food off an iPad. They put your food in a box, and there's no human interaction. So they, they, there are these people cooking food behind a wall of glass boxes, and then you pick it up. Um, given you see a that whole bunch of places like that, too, in New York. In New York? Yeah. Really? Automats, yeah. Yeah, on, yeah. Coming back. So do you guys think that's going to work? Because I feel like what makes... What makes your places so special is the tradition, the history, the people. Yeah, I mean, uh, is there a future for that? Same question. I mean, sadly, I think it will work. Um, I think that, I mean, you guys, probably everybody, I do it. Like, how many times have you gone on Caviar or uh, Uber Eats or any, you know, you get food delivered by somebody in a brown bag, they give it to you and you say thank you and you eat it and you don't have to, you don't even have to leave your house. Um, I think it's becoming more of the norm. Um, you know, it works for certain types of food, and I think it's you know great for sustenance. And I really need a salad, and I need a quick, and that's why you go to Itza. And you know, I don't want to talk to anybody, um, but there's certainly an element of sadness. I mean, but like that—that that would never work with something that we did, yeah. Because you know. It fills a certain role. I, I, I agree yeah. 100%. I think there, it will be successful because there is a certain need for that. But it's, it'll never fill the role of a full service restaurant. Yeah, there's and exactly human there, interaction. There, there's a place for it um, as long yeah as long as people you know uh, don't want that interaction. And a lot of times people don't. That's true. Yeah. I mean, we're all glued to our phones all day. I mean, yeah, it's true. Know. It's a miracle we're here talking to you guys right now. <laughs> Actually, certain people are live streaming it, and they're probably just at home thinking the same thing. Like, yeah. oh, man, now that you said that, I don't want to talk to you. They got pastrami <laughs> delivered. <laughs> uh, Jake, just uh, you talked a little bit earlier about the ticket drama. Uh, <laughs> would love to hear a funny story from the last month or two, but I also would love to hear about the genesis uh, of the commercial for Samsung Pay. Uh, because to me, I thought that was one of the funniest commercials I've ever oh, seen. Goodness. Hannibal Burris walking into Katz's Deli and using Samsung Pay because it works everywhere, even at Katz's Deli. Yeah, so, so um, I, I have a feeling like you had a bit of drama in the past <laughs> with the ticket system, so no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like a soup nazi. You know, I walk in, order, step to the left. Like, oh, okay, I, I, good. I, try, so, I knew exactly what to do. You have a doubt. No so you're drama a pro. Okay, yet, that's, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so 
The, uh, a good story. Um, I, I mean, there's, oh my God. It just usually ends in I mean, how often do you invoke your $50? I, I don't, okay, so I threaten people with the $50 if you lost a ticket. Um, generally, I try not to enforce that because um, I don't want to be a dick. Uh, sorry, can I say that? Yeah. Please, okay. yeah. Uh, Anything goes at Google. <laughs> um, you know, it's, I, I'd rather not. I'd rather you just find the ticket and like we can move on with our lives. Like it's not that big a deal, but every once in a while you get people who just want to make a whole show. I had one lady who called the cops on us because she <laughs> said we were harassing her and we were falsely imprisoning her. And I'm like, lady, all I'm asking is like, can you, can you just check the table? You know what I mean? Like it's not that big a deal. So, you know, it can turn into drama sometimes. Um, Again, that's a nice way to put it, right? Uh, the Samsung Pay commercial was was very interesting. Uh, I got a call from Samsung in the middle of December, which is uh, our busiest time. And I said, we want to come in and we want to film a very large shoot. And, and I said, um, no, uh, that, that's, that's not going to happen. It's too busy. And they said, OK, uh, we'll make it work. You know? And I said, oh, well, if you want to pay, sure. Yeah, no problem. Uh, <laughs> It kind of, uh, that was all their idea, all their planning. Um, all my guys are in the shoot, uh, except for there's one actor. If you look closely, there's a, a gentleman who was the lawyer in on The Wire, if you ever watched that show. Remember, it, yeah, that's supposed to be me. Um, Why weren't you in it? I was, I don't know, I wanted my guys to be in it, and I figured, like, I didn't want to. It's very Because I do, well, yeah, like, I'll do other shows or things like that. I was like, let's let, you know, we'll let them do it and have some fun with it and really make it a, a hell of an experience. And so the big guy, that's one of my cutters. He's a character for sure. All the guys are characters. And so it was a fun shoot. It spent, we spent, um, it was a two-day shoot. Each day was nine hours, and we were open to the public while it happened. And it was interesting, to say the <laughs> least. But it worked out great, and uh, and and I see it all over the place. It's fantastic. Yeah, can't complain. I wanted to ask you about the difference between the two Wise Sons locations. Sure. Like the museum is, I would say, fairly traditional. Uh, I mean, like you don't have all the same things on sure. the menu. I don't think. Can you discuss, like, you know, why or yeah. if that's always the plan? Well, uh, the muse our museum location is like. Uh, it's more of a sandwich shop. It's uh, we're open from eleven to two every day. Like you come in, you get your your sandwich, your salad, or your soup, and you go. Um, so part of the reason is because we don't have a hotline there. Well, we have a kitchen. We don't have like uh, deep fryers and griddles and kind of stuff to do um, more. And also the museum has hours that they enforce with us. We can't open till eleven, so there's no reason to do eggs and breakfast and that kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, you know, it's the Contemporary Jewish Museum. You can imagine that most of the customers there are coming for their pastrami and their chopped liver. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, 24 Streets obviously got a much bigger menu, a much fuller kitchen. So. Very so well, good. speaking of a second shop, Evan, do you have any advice for Jake on opening up a satellite, opening up a second shop? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, like you said, keep it simple. I mean, you guys have been doing the same thing, and you've been doing it the same way for a very long time. So. Um, it's a, you know, I'd say just making sure that uh, you, you set up the, the, the systems ahead of time so things are as simple as they possibly can be. I mean, you know, the, the biggest, we are located, we have, you know, three places in the city and we go, like, getting from place to place and getting product. I mean, I can imagine, you guys already do that. But having, having the line set up so you can actually uh, get things on time and that you need and not get the wrong orders into a restaurant. That's like, that's the biggest headache we deal with. Um, we haven't talked about bagels at all. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'd like to discuss yes. bagels. 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 We do serve um, bagels. Yeah. And even, oh, so you do serve bagels. Do you make them? Uh, no, I work with a, a bakery that I've, we've worked with for a very long time, actually, um, in Brooklyn. So um, I, I don't have the space or I, I focus on what I don't do it. Do. Yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. Do it. It's it's a whole different headache when you're talking bakery, and he can definitely attest to that. New York bagels versus San Francisco bagels. Is there a controversy? I haven't tried San Francisco bagels, but I imagine they're horrible. They're, they're terrible. <laughs> um, I'd say the biggest thing that gets me just quickly is uh, I hate when people call us a New York deli. 
I hate when people compare us to New York. We're not New York. We're not, a, we're not trying to be a New York deli. We're trying to s serve Jewish deli food, which, yes, has origins in New York. But we don't want to be that. Um, and I also find it hard when people say, oh, well, it's a San Francisco bagel. Because that's basically just people saying it's not a New York bagel. Um, <laughs> we just try and make a good bagel. That's all it is. It's different. It's good, but it's just different. Yeah, because the streets don't. No, you no, know, lay in more. I know you. It's like you're holding back right there. You were. No, I'm not. I, I love their bagel. I've written about my love for their bagel, and it, yeah. it's just like you encounter all the time. It's just not the food of my youth and my memories. Sure. But that doesn't mean it's not great. Right. In a city with relatively few Jews, such as San Francisco, um, you know, you don't have the problem. Yeah, we have a couple <laughs> Jews in New York. Um, <laughs> this is the entire community we're here. Jugal right here. Why, why sons? It might be the only, um, you know, the only time in a week or two weeks or a month that somebody interacts with Jewish culture or Jewish mm -hmm. American culture. And so my question is, do you ever feel a certain pressure to represent Judaism or, or Jews in America or anything like that? So yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I would say about 40% of our customers are Jewish. Um, but we, you know, we looked at it. People said, "Why, like, why San Francisco? There's not a lot of Jews." Well, there are a fair amount of Jews. They're just not the ones that are going to synagogue every week, or you know, uh, you know, celebrating Shabbat every Friday. Um, but they're out there. Um, you wouldn't believe uh, they're, they're out there. <laughs> on, on Yom Kippur, when people aren't supposed, you know, Jews are fasting. We get Jews that come in to eat because they're just like, it's a Jewish holiday. I should do something Jewish. <laughs> um, you know, people, people's parents come into town, and they're like, oh, i got to take them to the Jewish restaurant to like, make good on that. You know? and, and that's great. I love being that, um, because that's what I wanted before we opened. Um, I have a strong Jewish identity. I went to Jewish summer camp. Um, I was never religious, so it was always cultural. It was always about the food for me. Uh, so we want to give those people a place to come in and eat and hang out. Do you guys get the sense that outside of New York, there's probably a market for one great deli in every city? So I'm from LA, Brent's Deli, yep. and then everything else for me. I'm from Southern California. Nate Mills, I don't know. No, Brent's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have that in a couple places. You know, if you're saying, like, anyone from Chicago will immediately say Manny's, right? Or, or if you're in Michigan, they're like, oh, you got to go to Zingerman's, right? And um, in some ways, people have that. Um, uh, people have their favorites, uh, and I don't know that you can necessarily compare or compete with people's first love. Um, so I, you know, uh, there's always room for good food. But in there's the city. A, yeah, exactly. And it, like a Jewish deli, at the end of the day, we're just another. Well, we're, it's pretty American, but we're another ethnic food. It's like saying I want to go to Chinese food. I want to go to, you know, get sushi. I want to get a pastrami sandwich. Um, so there's room. I think what's interesting is you know all of these s bigger industrial cities that have institutions, like you said, um, uh, and that is I feel like that's a lot harder um, to to build these days. Um, but it's definitely something we think about. Are you hoping to be that? For <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, I think our Instagram handle is San Francisco's Jewish Deli. We we want to be we want to be cat. I mean, again, we don't want to be cats, but we want when people think of pastrami in San Francisco or Jewish deli, we want to be like on people's tongues. Like that's that's our goal. We have time for one tongues, more. I like that. that tongues. Good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so congrats on opening the the Fillmore store. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, in, in general, I kind of wanted to hear like how it's going. Um, I, I'm super excited about the, yeah. the Fillmore restaurant like neighborhood growing, right? Uh -huh. I sort of see you guys as one of the new anchors of sure. that. Um, and, uh, and so thoughts, comments? Yeah. Uh, so if, for those of you that don't know, we opened a, a commissary and a small bagel shop uh, on Fillmore and Geary, across from State Bird Provisions. Any of you guys have been there. Um, the Fillmore was the Jewish neighborhood in San Francisco probably until like 1940. Um, so there's a lot of history there. It's really cool to be opening a Jewish restaurant in that neighborhood. Um, you know, it is. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's not. It's weekdays are tough over there. Uh, you know, we have. There's a good amount of foot traffic, but it's not like being in. I think some other neighborhoods in San Francisco. I think people ask. Uh, 
you know, why, why the Fillmore? Um, it's central location. There, there's a, you know, a lot of people coming through there. Weekends are insane because people are nearby in their home and they, and they come through. Um, but also, it's, it's continuing to grow. Um, you know, Where's for those the next of you, one? what was that? Where's the next one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what, what, I mean, which next one? <laughs> uh, That's but, a bigger but if you've been to like Divisadero and like seen how Divisadero, the corridor is like beginning to like really like new restaurants are opening every week. I think Fillmore is probably like five to eight years behind that. Um, what can we be doing to, to help that location? Like, what's the best in terms of bringing people on an ongoing basis? Come by during the week and order catering, guys. <laughs> order catering. Guys, the takeaways you need from this is Katz's is, is ships that nationwide, and Wise Sons yeah. is on caviar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. There you no. go. Come Here's by, tell point. your friends. That's a clip note. Put it on Twitter, <laughs> put on Instagram. It seems like we need kids with bruises and marmots. Well. Yeah, that, yeah, that'll work too. Um, or adults, but that's a little. But also, <laughs> guys, we're, we're at the Ferry Building every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Come by. I'm, I'm there a lot. Come say hi. Um, but just, like, coming in. Like, pe yeah, people are like, what can we do for you? Just come in and eat. That's all. Come in, eat a little bit. Yeah, a little. you're so skinny. Eat. <laughs> God, you're I'll all tell skinny you, I'm bones. really excited. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to New York tomorrow, and I'm going to go into Katz's on Tuesday and hopefully yep. get the, the, official, the official tour. Yeah. Um, do I get plan. to stand behind the counter? I that, don't have to well, cut meat. I just want to walk back there. That we'll see. How many years do you have to train <laughs> to be a cutter? Uh, so you start on the floor, and then you go to the uh, French fries and sodas. Then you go to the grill. Then you go to the back counter, and then you can become a. Uh, so, cutter. so listen, I don't if think I'm gonna be able to do that in a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give you. I'll give you a shot, though. I'll give you a shot. Sounds <laughs> good. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for being yeah, here today. Yeah. Th thank you guys. Yeah, I think we'll hang you. out if you guys have questions afterwards. Yeah.